terminate EM, the anion gap and high anion gap metabolic acidosis or HAGMA. The anion gap can be useful in your undifferentiated sick patient. By convention and in order to avoid getting struck by lightning all the time, your serum must remain electrically neutral. So the total number of cations must equal the total number of anions. The most prevalent cations are sodium and potassium. The rest we call unmeasured cations. The most prevalent anions are chloride and bicarbonate. The rest we call unmeasured anions. Plug in some normal values and you end up with this number here. This is because there are more unmeasured anions kicking about than there are unmeasured cations. This shortfall in cations is bizarrely called the anion gap. The normal anion gap is between 12 and 16. Remember this by thinking of it as a crap number plate. Hagma occurs due to the presence of organic acids. Chuck them into the equation. Now they will come with their own hydrogen ions because they're acids. So the bicarbonate buffer system kicks off. The bicarb goes, thank you very much, and disappears as it tries to buffer the hydrogen ions. This leaves the anion from the organic acid. It has a big presence on this side of the equation. Putting the numbers in now shows that this number, the anion gap, is massive. This whole scenario is what Hagma is. There are only a finite number of organic acids that can do this to your body. Luckily, there is a mnemonic to help you remember what these or their parent compounds are. I really like cat mud piles. Right, I'll try and do it in one breath. Cyanide, carbon monoxide, amino glycosides, I think I might forget that one, toluene from glue sniffing, methanol, uremia, DKA, and you can shoehorn in AKA and SKA while you're at it, paracetamol, didn't know that, and peraldehyde, isoniazid, iron, you might see someone with an iron overdose, lactate, that's a biggie, ethylene glycol, and salicylates, another biggie. And that's it. So remember, electrically neutral, organic acids, and cat mud piles. Thanks.